Welcome back children. So in the last class we have done distance time graph. In this class at first we will do speed time graph. Now here is the graph which I have already drawn. Let a body moves with a constant speed v. This you may understand the body is moving in this way. The speed is v which is constant. So to find the distance covered during time t1 and t2 we draw perpendiculars from A and from B to the graph to intersect at point D and at point C respectively. Here A represents t1 and B represents t2. And this v is represented by AD which is same as BC. Clear? So, if we want to find the distance covered by this body with a speed of V between time T1 and T2, then you know the formula of distance. What is distance? Speed into time. So, distance is speed into time. That is, speed is V over here you can see. And time here is T2 minus T1. Now V is represented by AD. This V is represented by AD or BC. And this T2 minus T1, this is represented by AB. But here AD into AB is what? <coughs> AD is the breadth and AB is the length. So this is the area of this rectangle ABCD. So this area of the rectangle ABCD will give the distance covered by the body with a speed of v between time t2 and t1. So remember in distance time graph the slope of the graph give the speed. In displacement time graph the slope of the graph give velocity. And here the area covered by the graph and within the perpendiculars drawn to the time axis. This area of this rectangle or area of the geometrical figure will give you the distance in case of speed time. Now here if you replace speed with velocity supposing in, 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 in place of speed time graph you write velocity time graph. Then, in place of speed, if you write velocity, then the same thing, you will get what? You will get displacement. So, displacement of the body between time interval T2 and T1, when the body is moving with a constant velocity V. So, in velocity time graph, the area of the figure formed between the given graph and the perpendiculars drawn to the time axis. The area of that figure gives the displacement. So always remember, area of the figure formed in speed time graph will give you the distance. Area of the figure formed in velocity time graph will give you the displacement and slope of distance time graph will give the speed and slope of displacement time graph will give the velocity clear children so don't get confused whenever you have to find the slope slope will give you either speed or velocity and area will give you <coughs> either distance or displacement as the case may be so you must Remember this. Okay children. Here is our velocity time graph. Now here I have taken velocity in y axis and time in the x axis. This is the graph OA of a body. Now let the velocity of a body changes from V1 
to v2 in time from time t1 to t2. They have written that the body changes its velocity from v1 at t1 to v2 at t2. You can see here v1 at t1 and v2 at t2. Now drop perpendiculars from v2 and t2. You have drop perpendiculars from v2 and t2 and these two perpendiculars will intersect at a on the graph and perpendiculars from v1 and t1 will intersect the graph at c. <coughs> Now produce this V1C to meet this AT2 at B. Clear? So here you can see one triangle has been obtained. Small triangle has been obtained over here. Triangle ABC. Now supposing if this angle is theta. <coughs> theta. Then. Here. See here. AB is represented by V2 minus V1. AB is this much. That is V2 minus V1. This much only. Similarly, BC is this minus this, that is T2 minus T1. So, AB is represented by V2 minus V1 and BC is represented by T2 minus T1. So, in this triangle ABC, tan theta is equal to AB by BC, that is perpendicular by base. So, AB is V2 minus V1 by T2 minus T1. So, this is, if you remember, as we found out the slope in case of distance time graph and displacement time graph, here also we are finding the slope of velocity time graph. So slope or gradient of OA, that is of velocity time graph, will give us the acceleration of the body. So here this graph represents uniform acceleration. So remember, whenever in case of velocity time graph, there is a straight line. If you get a straight line, then it represents uniform acceleration. On the other hand, if you do not get a straight line, supposing in velocity time graph, in velocity time graph, if you get a curve, then this curve will represent non-uniform acceleration or you can also say variable acceleration. Did you understand? So, slope of a velocity time graph will give us acceleration. If it is a straight line, then it is uniform acceleration. If there is a curve, then we will get variable acceleration. So what you have learned? The slope of distance time graph gives speed. The slope of displacement time graph gives velocity. The slope of velocity time graph gives acceleration. The area in a sp speed time graph gives distance, the area in a velocity time graph gives displacement. So these five things you must put in your head very nicely because a lot of objective type of questions are asked based on this and after this we will go to the derivation of the same those three equations of motion you remember which I have done, we have done it algebraically. Now the, the same three equations of motion we will do by the graphical method. So first equation of motion you remember is V equal to U plus AT. Second equation of motion is S is equal to UT plus half AT square. And third equation of motion V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. So these three equations of motion we will derive by the graphical method in our next class. Thank you.